you're expecting an electronics video? Well, you're right. In this video, we're going to show you how you can hook up your Nerd Kids microcontroller kit to the onboard computer of your car and read the data from it. Since 1996, all cars by law have an onboard computer that is hooked up to a bunch of sensors in the car. The primary purpose of these sensors is to provide diagnostic information about the car, like for your annual emissions test or troubleshooting the check engine light. We can also connect the computer to get interesting real-time data, such as speed and RPMs. We have three wires that go to the nerd kit and plug right into the port. The three wires are the battery, ground, and the data line. Those three wires go up to the breadboard, which holds the mic controller and the small circuit that helps interface with the car's computer. All cars are required to have an OBD2 connector, but that doesn't mean they all follow the same standard. In fact, most major car manufacturers follow a different standard for communicating with this bus. So, before undertaking this project, make sure you know what standard your car follows. The car we're reading data from is a 977 Cavalier, which means it is using the VPW standard mostly found on GM cars. <coughs> Most digital signaling uses high and low voltages to represent digital ones and zeros. However, the variable pulse width protocol uses a slightly different method. It varies the duration of the high and low periods to indicate ones and zeros, and it uses a voltage transition to indicate that the next bit has started. The nurture is continuously pulling the car computer and retrieving the data about the velocity, RPM, percentage throttle, and the engine cooling temperature. This circuit uses two optocouplers to allow the microcontroller to communicate at the higher voltage levels used by the car. This way, the two halves of the circuit are connected optically, but not electrically. Inside each optocoupler is an LED and a phototransistor. The current flowing through the LED produces light that turns on the phototransistor, and this is how the information is passed back and forth. We actually use two optocouplers, one for transmitting to the car and one for receiving information from the car. The code implements the VPW standard. It uses two timer interrupts and pin change interrupt. One of the timer interrupts is used for receiving and one for sending, and the pin change is used to figure out when a transition has happened. When we're trying to read the data from the car, we use the pin change interrupt to watch the voltage changes. When a transition has occurred, we check the timer and decide whether the car was sending a high bit or a low bit. When we're trying to send the information to the car, we use the other timer to decide when we want to change the pin voltage depending on whether we want to send a 0 or a 1. In the main loop, we keep sending the codes to read the values we want and display the values to the LCD. For more information about our kits or more videos like this one, visit www.nerdkits.com. Now let's go for a drive.